Hey everybody, welcome to another Paint With Me video. This month I'm gonna do a moth because last week was uh, National Moth Week, which I love to participate in. I try to attract moths in my backyard with a ultraviolet light and stuff. I never really have that great of luck because I kind of live close to the city, I guess. And maybe there's a lot of street lights. I don't know, I, d I only get little guys. But whenever I was a kid, I was super into it and I used to get big ones all the time. And one of my favorites was the Luna Moth. So I thought I would do a nice painting of a Luna Moth this time. I am using Aquaboard, which if you don't know what that is, it's really kind of like a canvas for um, watercolors. It's like a hard board and has a really nifty coating that kind of acts like pa watercolor paper. So the first thing I'm doing is just doing a quick sketch, like an outline sketch of the moth. And now I am putting on some masking fluid. My favorite kind is by Holbein. And the reason I like this kind is because if you use a heat gun to dry it, like I do a lot, it doesn't affect it. Like I've used masking fluid before that if you use a heat gun or a hair dryer, it would dry it so hard that it would kind of pull the paper up but this one doesn't do that so I'm using the masking ink over the moth so I can do the background I love to do that because it just helps you to be able to do a nice even wash over the background and not worry about having to go around the edges of the moth and it just it it has a really pretty look to it so I am drying the watercolor with my heat gun and then to get rid of the masking ink you just kind of pull it off the paper and it's really very satisfying to do so the next step I am mixing a green that I like that is pretty close to the actual green I'm using a couple, few different kinds of watercolors. I have my pastel set from White Knight's watercolor. So I have that mint, but then I'm adding some green from my White Knight's watercolor set. So I'm just doing the back layer of the green. And I'm leaving the spots white so that I can paint the cool little eyes after a while. So this is just the first layer. And then I thoroughly dry it with my heat gun again. And of course, I splatter a little bit by accident, so I'm kind of fixing that. <laughs> so I'm mixing a little yellowish, brownish green just to give it some more dimension, something for the, the body, and a little bit of shading. Notice how there's that little section where the wings overlap. I'm trying to keep it so it looks, I don't know, a little transparent. It's hard for me to explain what I'm trying to do, but you can see both wings at once. So I'm kind of trying to keep that effect going there. So now there's, I'm doing the brown spots. So there's like a brown band across the top that goes clear across his body. and. To the ends of both wings and then down into that eye down below there's sort of a pinkish brown bands under each one of the wings And 
this is just the first layer. I just kind of put down one layer and blend it in so the edge isn't as harsh. There's some pale pink in each one of those eyes. Kind of fixing my, my little mistake there. Just working on the eyes a little bit more. There's some yellow in it. Now I'm refining the body again. Adding some more of the pink color around the edges. Just some more layers to refine it a little bit. Refining the eyes. There's some black on the tops of each one of those little eyes. Just mixing a, another green to add a little bit more dimension, just so it looks more realistic, like some shading and just variations on the wings. And just working on that pink line again. Brown line at the top, just making darkening it, darkening it up a little bit. Adding some more dimension to the body, some more fur. So I have this silver acrylic ink by Liquitex. I'm using that for the middle of each one of the, the eyes on the wings because I don't know if you've ever seen a Luna Moth in real life, but it, it is very, it, it is shiny right there. It's like an iridescent silver. And for the rest of this video, it's just a lot of refining. I go over the edges several times to just add some more variations. As you can see right here, I'm starting to use watercolor pencils. I don't always use watercolor pencils, but sometimes I think it's easier to add some detail and especially the way butterfly and moths wings are it kind of has, has a texture that you can achieve with just the pencil over the paper or the <laughs> the aqua board in, in this case kind of gives it a, like a rigid texture so i have a white pencil that i was um, going around all the edges inside of the pink bottom line There's kind of like veins in each wing. So I'm just doing very, very faint lines for each of those. Some of them are kind of like a light gray and some of them have some white highlights. Just keep looking at the moth and deciding where it needs refining, putting some shading down at the, the bottom there where those little tails come down because they, they kind of curl over so I wanted to make sure it looked like they were curling. Just refining and refining. Adding more white highlights. And I'm actually adding some real dark white highlights with a white Posca pen fine liner. I love the Posca pen for whenever you really want to make some bold white lines. So 
now I'm working on the antennae, which I decided to use some fluid acrylic ink for that because I just couldn't get it to be bold enough, but I wanted to use a brush so I could really get the lines fine. So I used some Liquitex opaque white acrylic and went down with the white with just a touch of yellow, yellow and um, brown. Just put that down, let it dry, and then I'm gonna go over it again to add a little bit of shading with a darker version of those colors, like just a little bit more shadow. So there you go, beautiful Luna Moth. Have you ever seen one in real life? Because they are amazing. I haven't seen one in years and years and years, but they are just so beautiful. So as always, I'm gonna link in the description of uh, how to follow me on social media, um, my Patreon, and also all the supplies I used. So yeah, thanks for watching and leave me a comment. Let me know you're here. And if you have any requests or suggestions that you would like to see in my videos. Have a great day, everybody.